Chase Lee Hockey with a blue futon. And the second movie I saw today was Bullet Train. So you zoom to his Bullet Train all across Japan, even though it was filmed in LA. Let's find out. <laughs> So Bullet Train, what's about? It's a very simple premise, actually. Think of this as a light Quentin Tarantino movie that has taken place on a train with a bunch of different characters. And when I say a bunch of different characters, I mean Brad Pitt, Joey King, Aaron Taylor Johnson, Brian Tyree Henry, Andrew Kyoti, Michael Shannon, Bad Bunny, which I never knew who Bad Bunny was. I still don't know really why Bad Bunny's famous. But anyway, Sandra Bullock, Zazzy Beats. Logan Lemire, Masioka, uh, and a couple cameos. If you know the director, David Lynch, you're going to know what cameos are in this movie. And I don't want to mispronounce this guy's name, but he's a very, very famous Japanese uh, actor. Hiroyuki Sandana. Probably say his name completely wrong, but did I like this movie? I liked it, but I expected to like it a little bit more. So with that, I will give the negatives of the movie first. It feels off. The movie just feels a little too chaotic, too messy, and then very weird. And just you got to put suspension of belief out the window or door or take that imaginary wall they're talking about out of your brain because a lot of the stuff just doesn't make sense with everything happening on the train. People dying. Shot, stabbing, people don't notice at all. Like seriously, no one notices. Then we have train conductors and the train uh, people that are checking the tickets. They just magically dif- disappear in the third act. Like nothing makes sense in this movie. Like you got to take the suspension of disbelief. It's gone, and I that can be a negative for a movie like this because when you do have movies like John Wick and these other bombastic action set pieces, you could be like. I see this happening. This is kind of... I can see this in the real world. I could see the whole Halle Berry, John Wick 3. I could see these other action movies have this. But with this one, with the trains hitting each other and them going through a different town, the collateral damage is absolutely bombastic in this movie. And it just it just doesn't make sense on any levels. And I do think that is a fault for the movie because you got to at least put some suspension of belief for the audience because when you know all of this is fake and all of it cannot happen... And it just has random characters that just disappear. Literally, they disappear. You just got to be like, eh, okay, I see what that is. I think that's my biggest flaw of the movie. Yeah, the writing is sloppy. The editing is sloppy. A lot of stuff in this movie is just sloppy. But I also had a fun time with the sloppiness and the sloppy editing and stuff like that. Because when the action set pieces were there, they were extremely strong. And you could tell that David Lynch, who is a stunt man before doing directing at his helm, actually sees it because the action is hardcore in frame and not a lot of jump cuts when it comes to that. But it's the other weird editing where you're just like, this story. It's not really the editing of the movie, it's the editing of the story, which I just feel like it's too convoluted and just too scatterbrained. There's a lot of Swiss cheese in this movie, and that is that. But with the Swiss cheese comes some great cheese from Amsterdam because when the action set pieces come, they're bombastic, they're fun. When the humor comes, it's bombastic and fun. And it is a fun little movie that you can have a good time with. But my gosh, my suspension of disbelief was out the window when it came to a lot of the stuff. And a lot of the stuff did feel a little bit cheap on some levels too with some of the CGI. It just didn't work on a lot of levels. I understand what they were going for in this movie and what kind of humor they are doing. But it is just a movie where you just watch it and you just go, I see what you're doing, but... Ah, it just feels like something missing is very white Quint Tarantino and they try to do it that way. And I don't think they succeeded correctly. That would have been really fun if Quint Tarantino did write this movie. Kind of like how he written True Romance, but Tony Scott directed that one. So Quint Tarantino did like a movie like this and written it and had like a David Lynch, a stuntman direct this movie. I think that would be a fucking fantastic combo. But what we get is a great directed movie. With just weird scenarios that just take the viewer out, in my opinion. So overall, Bullet Train is a fun time in the movie. But my goodness, turn your brain off and just enjoy what is on screen. And just know, this is a movie 
movie with no realism whatsoever. So Bullet Train will receive a 3 out of 5 with futons, which equals at 60%. I do wish I could go higher with this movie. I really do. But a key fundamental piece in this movie just feels like it doesn't exist. So let's see what the critics news scores gave this one. We have the critics a 54% with 232 of them. Audience score is 79% with over 500. Here's critic consensus. Bullet Train's colorful cast and high-speed action are almost enough to keep things going after the story runs out of track. Ha! I see what you did there with the puns. So anyway, my 60, that 54, 79. Chase Yogg with the Blue Food Tone. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think is Blue Tone Topia. You Blue Tonians, thanks for watching. Have a great day. <coughs> <coughs> I had some Oreo popcorn in the movie theater. It was pretty good. <laughs> I've been holding back coughs, though. No bueno. No bueno. And seriously, Bad Bunny, anyone could have done his part. His acting was literally to be like, mm, I'm mad. Mm.